Give us another insight into how you came to the field. Then I, I read a lovely story about your grandmother, Vera, uh, who sounds like an amazing woman. I believe she was once thrown off Bondi Beach as a youngster for being dressed a little bit too racily. Is it true that it was your realisation that as much as you loved her, she only had a finite life that made you think about ageing? And tell us more about the work your own family's doing. You said they're, they're trialling some of these molecules? Yeah, well, I come from a family of scientists. My father and my mother were scientists. My wife's a scientist. My kids, at least two of them, want to be scientists. So we're, we're, we're that way inclined. Um, so my grandmother, first of all, uh, she helped raise me. And uh, she was a young grandmother. She actually had my father when she was 15, so she was more like a mother. Um, I would say, if I want to be honest, and I probably I don't think I've ever said this publicly, uh, she thought the sun shined out of me, so to speak, and told me that it was my duty to help humanity. She survived World War II and uh, the European aftermath in Hungary. And she came to Australia in 1956, and this was the land of you know, freedom and, and bounty. And, you know, and I came along and she just thought, wow, um, this little kid can change the world and make the world a better place rather than what she saw in her life. Um, and she instilled that in me. But what really got me going on aging was uh, I was four years old. And, you know, like most kids, you are, every kid asks their parents or their grandparents, are you always going to be there for me? Um, you know, and my grandmother's fairly brutal. Uh, she said, no, I'm not. I'm going to die. And then your parents will die. Your pets are going to die. And then you're going to die. As a four-year-old, that's that that's life-changing, right? And so I, I wasn't worried about my own death. I'm still not worried about my own death. If you've ever seen me drive a car, you'd know that that's the case. But um, I'm more interested in leaving a mark on society, you know, making my life worthwhile. You know, we all I think we all want to leave an impact somehow, whether it's through kids or through uh, writing something or discovering something um, or just being a good person. That's what I what drives me. And I think that figuring out why we get sick in the first place uh, is a really worthy goal that when I started wasn't being worked on in any rigorous way. And what are your family doing at the moment? You said that they're, they're using some of these molecules day to day. What sort of results are you seeing? Are they actual you know, official trials or just gobbing them down occasionally? What's going on? Well, you know, consider I'm at Harvard Medical School. I get in trouble for saying stuff like this. But what I, what I can say is, um, you know, I, ne I don't shy away from a question I ne and I never tell a lie. So let me tell you the facts. Um, so I, I never make recommendations. Right? I'm not a doctor, a real doctor. I'm just a PhD. But my father is 81, turning 81. Um, and he's looked at the research. He can read scientific papers. And he's made a judgment call that the risk is very low and that of taking the molecules that we discovered uh, and the risk of not taking them is is really bad, right? We know what's going to happen anyway. We're, we're all in denial really of what's coming. And so he started taking resveratrol probably 13, 14 years ago. He's been taking NMN daily for oh, at least three years, four years maybe. Um, and, you know, a few other things that are listed in my book, page 304, if you want to jump to it. Um, you know, but I'm not recommending people do that, right? Everybody's different. We don't know the full safety, but they do seem to be very safe molecules. Um, you know, it doesn't seem to be hurting my dad. He's, he's 81 and for his age, you know, he's, he's fitter than me. He, he's very strong. He's, uh, you know, anyone who's seen him on the internet, he's, he's really a, a, a bright light for, uh, you know, for, for all of us. Now, we don't know if the molecules make a difference. It also helps that he does a lot of exercise. Um, but it's just a, it's a ray of hope, a beacon for us to follow, I think. Um, we are doing clinical trials, right? I'm not just saying, oh, that's that anecdote proves anything, of course. We need to do rigorous placebo, double-blind controlled studies, which we're doing. But in the meantime, you know, someone who's 81 can't wait another 10 years for the result. That's interesting because a lot of people would know, of course, you're doing this sort of stuff in mice. I'm sure you have been for a long time. But there are actual clinical trials taking place now on aspects of this research with humans? Dozens of them, actually. Uh, there are trials on drugs that are already available from your doctor, not for aging, of course. There's one called uh, metformin, which is given to type 2 diabetics when you have high blood sugar. That one looks like it in tens of thousands of people actually reduces 
diseases of aging, not just diabetes, but cancer, heart disease, Alzheimer's. So that's one aspect. We want to do bigger studies with thousands of people, but that's coming. But also drugs in development, it, it may come as a surprise to hear that there are you know, probably 50 companies that are working on aging or drugs that may help aging. Um, I, I've started, I think, now 13 different companies. Many of them work on aging. And we have clinical trials in progress, uh, such as this MIB-626, which has been in humans for the last two years and looks looks really interesting. There are other ones like uh, senolytics. These are drugs that kill off the zombie cells that accumulate in the body. Um, and they, they look promising too. Some of those are public companies. So somebody's going to crack this. It's, it's going to happen, you know, often you say in the next five years, but certainly within our lifetimes, there will be drugs that your doctor can give you um, legally and ethically that should be able to slow down aging and maybe even reverse it. 